All right, so let's see here. Custom validators. So Angular uh, 2 validation supports, and we talked about this a little bit earlier, required min length, max length, and pattern. Um, I've seen some issues with pattern. I don't know if it's me dealing with it as strings. However, I plug it in, and, and uh, it, it doesn't seem to validate quite the way I, I, I like it to. So often, we're just creating our own custom validators for pattern matches. Um, so if I do need something custom, how do I create my own validator? So directives versus classes. Historically, we always had to create a directive because we're applying it attribute-based. However, now we have a choice. Directives are required for template-driven validation. You have to. You, you, you have to be able to place it on the, in the HTML so that it can be applied uh, to that element. Classes work best for model-driven validation. However, you can do but you can use directive ones on models. They're just a little different um, in, in how you declare them on the model. The best practice actually I think is support both. And that's what we're going to take a look at here with the email one. So in our case here, this, this one might look familiar if you've dug through a little bit of code. This is straight out of, if you look at the, the link that we're crediting here, this is out of Angular Forms validators. So this is a uh, the validators class that we've been referencing when we add required or min length, max length, or pattern. Um, and so it's abbreviated. They're, they basically just have a static method called required. It takes in an abstract control and its return is uh, that there, I don't, I don't know even how to describe that. Um, Basically, they return if it's blank. This is a custom uh, function that they actually have later in it. Uh, they test to see if it's a string, whatnot. And basically, it returns either required is true or if the validation passes, then it just returns a null. Okay? So I'm showing you this because this is exactly how we designed our control. I literally copied the code. So if you're going to create a new validator, I strongly recommend that you actually go look at how the Angular team is developing one, and just use that as a base. You'll save yourself a lot of time, a lot of a heartache, um, if you use something as a, as a starting point versus just starting from scratch. So in our case here, we're pulling in abstract control from Angular Forms. Um, I'm exporting a class called BB Validators for Bbug Validators. And I have a static method called email that's going to take in an abstract control. Uh, we declare the return type. And then we have this horrendous uh, regex. So a very good friend of mine one time told me we had a problem, so we wrote a regex. Now we have two problems. <laughs> um, I, I don't quite uh, you know, fully claim to think that I can understand everything that's going on in this regular expression. Uh, I, get, I get parts of it, however it is uh, very complicated. However, we like the business rules that it was enforcing and, and uh, it seemed to work better than the other ones. So in our case here, we're going to check on our control. If it uh, doesn't have a value, then we're just going to return null. If there's no value, then it should be, in our, in our case for an email, required should pick it up, not our, our control, or uh, not, not this uh, validator here. Otherwise, we're going to take that regular expression, we're going to call test against it, and we're going to use our control value. Um, if it's true, then we return null. Otherwise, there's the email thing you were asking for, right there. So when we go check in our uh, get error, this is what it's looking for. What is the name of the error? And then we need to return that as true. That tells um, Angular that this is no longer valid. Does that answer your question? OK, great. So, so now let's talk about the email validator directive. All right, there it is. Where's all the code? First thing you should notice is we're importing right here. I'm not rewriting this directive. I'm not maintaining two different sets of source code. So really the biggest trick here is on the providers. Um, there's some great articles if you go out and look at, at uh, uh, custom validators for Angular 2 that explain the providers much better than I can. However, there's just basic uh, a basic pattern here for validators. And the big part on this is that um, you know, you're, you're using provide pointing to uh, ng validators, and you're using multi-true, and then you're either using use value, and you're pointing it to the, the exact validator you want to use, or you're, you, um, you're saying use, and then there's forward ref, and you're pointing it to the, uh, the class within your, in, this, in our case here, we'd point it to this. 
Okay, I can show you an example of that. It's not as common. Um, and we'll actually take a look at another validator that I want to show you because things can get a lot more complicated. A lot more complicated than this. Um, and especially when a, um, a directive needs to take in additional um, uh, parameters. Um, and so we start to get into factory patterns and whatnot, and we can kind of cover that a little bit. Um, what are we doing on time here? Oh, rolling through. All oh, right. Um, so how do we use this in a, te in a uh, template? So in our case here, it's really simple. It's I import uh, the directive. Um, I apply that directive to my component. And then right here, I just drop it in, validate email. So if you come back over here and look, that's the exact name. It's not hyphenating. It's not, it's not changing what my selectors are for it. Um, you're probably already noticing this a little bit with Angular 2 if you're working with it, that it's not changing what our selectors are based off the name of it and, and interpreting how they ought to be placed on the form. Um, in this case here, it can be applied to a model, it can be applied to a form control, and it can be applied to a form control name. Um, those are different selectors. There's a bunch of documentation on this and, and the various ways that you can declare these. Um, this makes it so that I can pretty much apply it to anything. Um, if I want to make it more restrictive, I will only want to be able to apply it to um, a uh, form control name, which would then limit me to, in a very bizarre way, I'd be applying this as a directive to an element that has a form control name that's bound to a model model-driven uh, validation. doesn't really make sense, however, okay, you know, you, you've got a lot of control there. So in our case here, we've been able to drop it on there, um, and this now validates um, using our, um, our template-driven. So how do I use it in a model? I go ahead and pull that in, the validators. Um, I Go ahead and apply it to my group. So in this case here, email, my default value is, is nothing. Um, I then want to apply two different uh, validators to it. I want to do validators required and validator uh, our validator email. And this will apply our, our standard uh, email validator to it. And the only thing I have to do over here is just get my control uh, form control name here to match this. Those two match. They're now married. They're wired up. I don't have to